Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're looking at upgrading the Velo 1 from CE1 to CE2. If you're unfamiliar with the Velo 1, it might be worth checking out my video on it. Link here. The Velo 1 shipped with CE1 in ROM. Plus it had a few very useful Philips exclusive programs. But in general, CE1 is quite limited. So this is an important upgrade in my opinion. Sadly on the Velo, you can't simply remove the ROM card and replace it with a new ROM, unlike on some of the other devices of the time or the original Palm Pilot. Nor is it possible to reflash the ROM like you would on newer devices. However, on the plus side, most of the Velos I've seen for sale on eBay and other places come with the CE2 upgrade. And that's because for the majority of devices shipped after the first six months, it was included for free. So in order to do this upgrade, you're gonna need a Velo 1, obviously, otherwise you've got nothing to upgrade. You're also gonna need the cradle or a sync cable in order to connect to a computer at the later stage. You need to get your hands on an eight meg RAM miniature card. That's because the new install will take up to an extra four meg of RAM. So it'll leave you with eight when you've completed it. You'll also need the Velo 1 flash miniature card with CE2 on it. In order to connect to a computer once you put the upgrades in, you're gonna need some sync software. So I'm gonna use Microsoft Windows CE Services 2.1. I'm using this for authenticity, but also it contains a copy of Microsoft Pocket PowerPoint, which can be installed. So I've uploaded a copy of this to the Internet Archive, should you wish to have a look. But I would suggest that you actually use ActiveSync 3.8, as it's a lot more stable. ActiveSync 3.8 is available from HPC Factor, which if you own a handheld PC, you really ought to check out. It has a huge archive of software and a very helpful and active community to help guide you through some of the issues you might encounter. You're also going to need the Velo 1 upgrade. Again, I've uploaded this to the Internet Archive so you can download it from there, or HPC Factor has the files. In addition to those things, you're also going to need a power supply for your Velo 1. It came with this automatically, so you should have one. If you don't, you're not going to be able to complete this upgrade. And finally, you need a computer running XP32 bit or earlier with a serial port or a USB serial adapter. In theory, it should work on a virtual machine running Windows. Windows 10. However, I've not tried it, so I can't be certain. For authenticity, I'm using this 1996 Fujitsu Lifebook 520D. It's running Windows 95. I've put Office 95 on it as well. And other than swapping the hard disk out for a compact flash card, it's all original. So I've already installed HPC Explorer and previously connected up to the Velo 1. So as a first step, it's important to synchronize and then back up all your data. Once you've synchronized and backed up, we're good to start. So the first thing we need to do is to turn it off and then we're gonna remove the batteries. So next up, we're gonna install the RAM card. Incidentally, the RAM card and the flash card are very slightly different. The RAM card has a couple of lugs just there, there, and on the top there, where the flash card is actually smooth. But since miniature cards never really took off and there's very little information on the internet, I can only assume it was to stop you putting flash in a ROM slot and vice versa. So, carrying on. Remove the blanking card. As we pop the RAM card into place, making sure it's lined up, it'll click nicely in. like so, and then we can replace the cover. At this point, if you're not bothered about upgrading to CE2, you could simply pop your batteries back in, continue with CE1, and enjoy the fact you've gone from four to 12 meg of RAM, giving you a huge amount of extra storage, and of course, the ability to simultaneously run more programs. Now do the same on the flash side. This one is held in place by a torque screw. Again, just remove the blanking card, making sure it's lined up. Because it's missing the ridge at this side, it doesn't click into place like it does on the other side. Instead, the door is required in order to keep the flash card in, in position. I did think that was a fault with this machine, but it's true on my other machine as well. 
So at this point, with the RAM card and the flash card both installed, you would imagine simply doing a hard reset would cause the Velo to boot into CE2. I thought the same, but you'd be wrong. And this is when you're going to need the power supply. Now we need to plug it into the power supply. Once it's plugged in, we need to power it on and you will reach the boot screen. So it'll tell you about the backup battery and here we have no backup battery installed blah blah and here we have expansion memory card notification telling us there's more ram finally head into the control panel you'll see there's a grayscale icon which we didn't have before but means that the screen is set to 16 grays rather than just the four that we're used to. So this shows that the ROM is installed properly and working. At this point, we can now power the machine off, unplug it, and install the batteries. So again, once you've done this, you could stop here, take advantage of some of the new features of CE2, such as a spell checker in Word, but what you don't have is the Philips application, so there's no voice recorder, for example. So at this point, I've uninstalled HPC Explorer 1.1, and we're going to start the installation process for Windows CE Services 2.1, although you'll be using ActiveSync 3.8. Now we're ready to reconnect the Velo. However, before you can do that, because of the ROM change, we need to go into the settings and set it up. Heading into PC connection, we can see it says connect using empty, and we need to change this even though there is only one option. This is a bit odd, but it needs doing before you can actually connect. Now we've done that, we should be able to simply drop it in the cradle and get it to work. So Windows now offers us to restore from a backup. So the backup's complete, we now need to disconnect the device, which will just pop out of its cradle and do a reset which we can do in the software menu under velo applications okay scratch that don't use the software reset it crashed the machine and it meant that i had to do another restore so we'll try it using the reset button on the top instead so i've disconnected press reset and this looks suspiciously like it's crashed again. So once again, that crashed completely and I couldn't retrieve any information. So my advice is do not do a backup and restore. Moving on, let's quickly synchronize. So now we're done with installing that, let's have a look at installing the rest of the upgrades. So booting the disk we get a readme, very boring, let's not bother. We get a Velo One upgrade and we get the world's largest software store. So the world's largest software store is no longer online and most of the software isn't actually stored on the CD itself, so it's a little bit useless. We're just going to go straight to install the Velo One upgrade. So there are the two telephone connectivity kits. I'm not going to bother with those at all as I'm not connecting to the telephone. So instead we'll start the upgrade. Right, so at this point we need to make sure we're not connected. That we've done steps one to three in the installation guide, which we have. Another warning that we must have completed all the other steps. You certainly can't do this upgrade if you've not got the RAM chip installed. And now it tells us to dock. We're connected. 
another one in that we have to have at least 12 meg of RAM. So at this point, we can decide what we actually want to install. So if you don't, for example, want the fax application, then you don't need to install it. If you don't want additional system funds, etc., etc., then simply deselect them. However, I'm going to install everything. So if we had another memory card slot that wasn't filled, and they are all filled, then we would be able to select somewhere else to install the files. However, everything's going into the RAM, so we're going to install it to the default directory. So now that's transferred, we've got a message to check our mobile device and it wants to know if we're going to replace these files and of course we're going to replace them because they're all new, so yes to all. Once we've done that, we're ready for the next round of files to install. Again, we're going to use the default directory. There it is. So we need to hit yes. And we'll click OK. Once that's done, it's going to go through an initial setup sequence as it's effectively done a hard reset, obviously maintaining everything that we've just installed in RAM. And there we have it, CE2 on your Velo 1. So there is one minor issue with having CE2 on your Velo 1. And that is that if the batteries should die for any length of time, you actually have to go through this entire process again. And as you probably realize, it takes quite a bit of time to actually transfer a little over three and a half meg of the Philips application upgrades took nearly 40 minutes. That said, as long as you heed the battery warnings and keep a decent backup battery in there, it shouldn't really be an issue. Just don't leave it sat on your shelf too long. So in terms of using the Velo One, there's actually a few different options. You could of course use CE One and just add the eight meg upgrade. So you've got 12 meg altogether, which is a lot for CE One and plenty of storage for lots of documents there. You could use the basic CE2 upgrade without any of the Philips add-ons and of course then you've still got 12 meg of RAM to use. The only problem with that is some of the Philips add-ons are actually very useful like the voice recorder. Of course you could do the full install so you've got all the Philips add-ons as well as CE2 and that will leave you about 8 meg of RAM or there is the option to do something in between should you decide you don't want to use it for writing faxes. If you have a Velo One, and certainly if you're using a Velo One, I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to know what you're actually using it for and what kind of setup you've got. Are you using the upgrade? Are you not? Am I the only person using one? Either way, pop a comment below. As far as CE One goes in general, it feels much more like a public beta than a finished OS. It's got a lot of basic functions that are simply missing. The software is a little bit buggy and it's got relatively high hardware demand compared to a Scion, for example, or a Palm. The introduction of Microsoft Services 2 dropped support for connecting to CE1. This was part of Microsoft's ongoing redundancy of CE1, which it abandoned pretty quickly as it was struggling to gain a foothold in the palm top market, which back in the late 90s was very lucrative. The palm top market at the time was very much dominated by Scion with its Series 3 range and the new Series 5. But let's not forget Palm, who at the time were starting to gain a bit of a foothold for people who wanted something a little bit smaller and weren't bothered about a keyboard. CE2 comes with huge changes to the operating system and the basic software contents therein. This makes it much more usable, though in true Microsoft tradition, of course, it meant you needed higher hardware specs. And with each new iteration of CE, 
those hardware demands continued to grow rapidly. But that's another story. A special thanks goes to Ruth Rock who donated this Velo One. This means I've got two of them and so in the next video we're going to have a look at CE1 and CE2 in a side-by-side -side comparison on the Velo. So as always if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to click like and hit subscribe. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. My name's Hugh, this is Handheld Computing, thanks for watching.